You lifted the knife above your head like this? No, no. And plunged it down to his heart like this? No, no, no. Not his heart, my heart. It was I who died that night. John Sturgis. <laughs> Midnight, the witching hour when the night is darkest, our fears the strongest, and our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? you learn the answer in just a minute in The Mark of Cain. <laughs> Murder at Midnight, Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by A.S. Guinness is The Mark of Cain. It's dawn now, the ash-colored light sifting in, covering us both with bitter dust, he and I. It's still there, the newspaper. I still haven't read it. And yet I know. How much longer can I fight it off? Not looking. I couldn't be wrong. I could, and... Who, who's there? John, are you awake? It's me, Edith. Let me in. Edith? Oh, just a minute. John, have you seen the morning paper? Paper? What's wrong with you, darling? You've read it, haven't you? No. But you're dressed and awake. Why? Please, Edith, what does it say? What did he do? After you dropped me at my hotel last night, I saw the item. I couldn't sleep. I waited for you to call. And when you didn't, I became worried. That's why I'm here at this hour. What page is it on, Edith? Bottom of nine. Bottom of nine. Knowing everything except what page. Knowing ever since last night... And the fear came on me again. And now, here it is. Bottom of nine? There it is. Oh, yeah. Canton, Ohio, June 13th. State and State Asylum. Come on, Sturgis. Be a good boy. No. Get back in your room like the others. No. You like me, don't you? No. I never hit you like the other gods. Who makes those noises in my head? You. You make crazy noises in my ears when I'm sleeping. You do. You know you do. Uh, uh, Sturgis, uh, I'll give you anything you want. Uh, two helpings of pudding tomorrow. Wouldn't you like that? No. I want to get out of here. I'm no loony. I want to get out. You will, Sturgis, you will. Now you'd better get back in your room. For years you've been saying I'd get out of here. But this time I'm really going. This time... Stand by, Sturgis. Don't come near me. Stand back! Why? Why? I'm no loony. I won't hurt you. Help! Oh, no, you don't. Don't make noises. Ask you. Don't make noises. I just want you to keep quiet. That's all. Don't keep Quiet. I just want you to keep quiet. That's all. There. See? Nice and quiet. Shut up! You crazy about your loony? Shut up! George Sturgis, the escaped lunatic killer, is heading for New York City. John, perhaps it's all for the best. This may be his end, and then... What are you thinking, John? That's an interesting question, Edith. What am I thinking? Am I thinking about George or about myself? It's hard to tell, isn't it? Because now we know, don't we? There's a lot more to being an identical twin than just flesh and blood. We have proof of that now, haven't we? And now we know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that I'm a drama critic and he's a lunatic, only by the grace of God. Darling, you've got to stop that. 
If you begin to slip back into your old fears, you're lost. Edith, dear, I, I'm going to see Stillman. Stillman? What for? Because, my dear, an editor is a little like God. At least he can give me the assignment I want. A police reporter's assignment. John. To cover the case of the dangerous lunatic, George Sturgis, my brother. <laughs> You're putting me in an awful spot, John. Why, Stillman? Why? I, I mean, I know it's not exactly usual for a drama critic suddenly to turn crime reporter, but I'll do a good job if that's what's troubling you. Of course not. You're a good writer. That's that's not what, what's worrying me. What is? Frankly, you. Your state of mind. My mind? Sturgis, I can understand your emotions about your brother. Being identical twins, it's no surprise that you're suffering from a sense of guilt about his actions, but... Well, darn it, man, do you have to work it off in this particular way? Tracking him down, bringing him into justice? What'll it do to you? No more than it's already done. Okay, Sturgis. You're a grown man, and I'm no psychiatrist. Have it your way. I'll tell the city editor. Thank you very much. Uh, just one thing. Mm-hmm. For my sake, keep talking this thing over with Edith as you go along. I've gotten the assignment, the authority that would permit me to act. Yes, now I could do it. I could find the other half of myself, the half that was insane. The question was, where should I begin? Where should I start looking? I was sitting there on Riverside Drive, staring into the darkness, when the answer came to me. <laughs> oh, of course, the game. The childhood game George and I played together. As young boys, we'd marveled at our likeness to each other. We played tricks on our parents. Even they couldn't tell us apart. But the game... I'd mentioned to George one day that since we were so much alike, our brains must be alike, too. And the game was born. What's on my mind, we called it. I'd guess his thoughts, and he'd guess mine. What's on my mind? If I were George, what would I be thinking? doing now. Dr. Portman. That's it. That's it. I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, you woke me up. What time is it and who are you? It's almost midnight and my name's Sturgis. John Sturgis. You're Dr. Portman, aren't you? Yes. Come inside. I put these lights on and... Well, I, I'm not a medical doctor, you know. If someone's yeah, ill, I'm afraid... I know. You're a nut doctor. A, a psychiatrist, aren't you? That's right. Uh, sit down. Ah, that's all right. Now, uh, what can I do for you? I came to see you about my brother. I think you know him. You said your name is... Uh... Sturgis. John Sturgis. Oh, the drama critic. Yeah. I don't think we've ever met before. Unless... Uh, are you originally from Ohio, Mr. Sturgis? Yeah. Oh. Then you don't mean that you're any relation to, uh, to George Sturgis? Yeah, I'm a relation. You sent him away to the nut house when you practiced in Ohio. Yes, yes, I recall. Uh, how is he now? I'm fine. Y you're fine. Well, I meant, uh, George. I said I'm fine. Thanks to you. W would you, uh, like me to get you a drink, Mr. Sturgis? Uh, no. Scotch? I don't want nothing from you. Not even a drink. I just came to pay my respects, Dr. Portman. My respects. No. Put that razor away. Put it down. Do you sure. hear? Sure. Like this. No. And this. No. And this. And this. Uh, your tongue set me away. Your tongue ruined my life. Your tongue talked in my head when I was sleeping. Sturgis. Stillman. Thank God you got here. I called the police. They haven't come yet. The police? What happened? Whose house is this? This is doctor's the one who sent him away. I couldn't have missed him by more than a couple of minutes. Missed him? Who? What are you talking about? I have the cops there, look. Good Lord. How could anyone... Only a maniac, Stillman. Only a maniac. Listen, Sturgis. I warned you that you'd taken on a tough job. 
Now you know just how tough Stillman. That body there behind that couch ought to be reason enough to turn back. Sturgis, why don't you drop it now? Leave it to the police. I can't, Stillman. I mustn't. I was able to figure out what George was going to do, wasn't I? Nobody else could, don't you see? All right. So you figured it out. But what good did it do you? You got here too late. But next time, Stillman, next time I won't be too late. And who is next, Sturgis? Do you have any idea? No. Sturgis, pull yourself together. Who is next? Who's next? Who will be next? John Sturgis did enter his mad brother's mind, guessed who his first victim would be, but not soon enough. And now his mind turns deep within itself, trying desperately to beat the hands of the clock before they meet again at 12 for... Murder at Midnight. <laughs> Now, back to Murder at Midnight and The Mark of Cain. Who's next? I didn't sleep that night. Could you with a question like that on your mind? And I didn't rest all that next day. Who's next? Who? Trying every minute to get inside George's mind and think the way he would. And then, that next night, I thought I had the answer. Nice night, eh? Yes. Yes, it is, officer. You uh, live in this house? Well, no. That is... Waiting for a friend? Oh, my brother. Oh. Hope you didn't mind my asking. This is my beat. I noticed you loitering in front of this house for the past two hours. Well, you know how a cop gets kind of suspicious at 4 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, of course. Oh, I think I'd better move on. Guess my brother's not going to show up after all. Yeah. Probably catching up with some drinks he missed earlier. <laughs> well, good night, officer. Good night, sir. I hadn't lied to that policeman. I had been waiting for George. Waiting in front of Edith's building. Because I knew that she was asleep. Asleep? And unaware that she was next. But, but why am I leaving this way? Why am I abandoning her? It's because a suspicious cop came along. What if George does? I've got to go back. Don't you? Edith, darling, are you are you all right? What? Why, John? Edith, what is it? Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Why shouldn't I be? Why? John well, Sturgis. How long is it since you've had a wink of sleep? Oh, no, two days, I guess. I don't remember. Oh, no wonder you wake me at four in the morning to find out if I'm all right. Two days without sleep and a man will do a lot of crazy things. It wasn't crazy, Edith. Then why, darling? I'm a grown woman. What can happen to me? Edith, I... I love you very much. If any harm should come to you... What harm, John? I... This business of George has made you lose all sense of perspective. George, is that what's worrying you? That George might... Pleased. But why should he? I can understand a lunatic taking revenge on the doctor who sent him away, but what have I ever done to George? You're reasoning logically, Edith. George's difficulty is that he's lost all sense of logic or reason. John, listen to me. Unless you go home this very minute and get some sleep... I'm going to have a chat with Stillman in the morning. Stillman? Look, darling, I love you very much. I've loved you for three years now. Three years during which we've both been trying to control your fears. Yes, Edith. They've been real fears, I grant that. And you've worked hard at keeping them in check. But if you go on the way you're going, you'll undo all we've accomplished. Yes, Edith. But what about Stillman? Unless you get a night's sleep and get hold of yourself, I'm going to ask him to take you off his foolish assignment. Perhaps you're right, Edith. Of course I'm right. Now, kiss me goodnight and go home like a good boy. Darling. Oh, John. <laughs> now, off to bed, will you? Good night, Edith. <laughs> Oh, 
Who's there? Yes. It's me. John? Yeah. Oh, just a moment. Hello, Edith. John, what on earth? Come in. Let me switch your light on. Why did you come back, John? It's only an hour since you left, and you said you'd go right home. What? You must have. Your clothes, they're different. Uh. Darling, you look sort of, well, disturbed. What made you come back? Uh, just wanted to see where you lived, Edith. What it looked like. What? Good taste. About the books and pictures. John. Sit down, Edith. I want to talk with you. Yes. Yes. Would you like me to fix some coffee, John? No. I said sit down. All right. Edith, you never saw George, did you? No. No, I haven't. Then why do you hate him? Huh? Why do you believe he's a loony before even getting acquainted with him? Huh? I, I, why did you try to come between two brothers? What huh? makes you think that? Two brothers rode each other for a long time, even though a quack called Portland sent one away to the nut house. I, I'd like to get some cigarettes over on the yeah. table if you don't mind. I do mind. Listen. Then George got a letter saying John had met a nice girl named Edith. And then no more letters. No more visits. Edith. Why'd you take my brother away from me? George. Edith. You shouldn't have done that. Get away from me. You like John. I'm just like John. But you hate me. And you talked John into hating me, too. Please. You talked him into it. John wouldn't have done that anymore. Oh, you talked him into it. Like no. this. No, don't. This. No. No. This. No. This. no. This. no. John? Stillman, I, I let her. I let her send me home. I should have known I was right. It's my own fault. I don't know what to say, John. Dr. Porton, now Edith. Did I take you off the assignment or let you remain on it? What difference? That seemed so important at one point, but now... <laughs> stop it, John, stop it. A man crying, that's... That's something I can't take. You can't take. I'll kill him for this, Stillman. I swear I will. I'll kill him. You have a right to, John. Stillman. Yes? Do something for me. Anything. Get me a permit to carry a gun. Fast. And you'll certainly need one for protection anyway. No, 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 that's not what I want it for. Uh, never mind. Here, let me call the police. I think I can get it for you in a hurry. Thank you, Thank you Stillman. <laughs> What's on your mind, mister? Is uh, Lieutenant Rogan here? Uh, who wants him? Um, Mr. Stillman of the Times Herald called about a gun permit, and Lieutenant Rogan suggested that I come on down. Uh, my name's Sturgis. Oh, Mr. Sturgis. Yes, sir. The lieutenant's waiting for you. Uh, right through that door, sir. You'll find him. Lieutenant Rogan? Yes, Mr. Sturgis. Well, come right in. Sit down, won't you? Uh, Buffett. Mr. Hermit. Sturgis, uh, you're the brother of George Sturgis, aren't you? Yes, I am. I just thought I'd ask you a question or two about him while you were here. You're uh, quite certain George committed those two murders, aren't you? Yes, quite. Do you mind uh, stepping into the next room with me, Mr. Sturgis? No. Right in there. There's uh, something in here, Mr. Sturgis. I'd like you to see. Yes, sir. Does this concern my gun permit, or are you still on the subject of now my brother? Now, right through here, Mr. Sturgis. Oh, why is it so cold in here? What is this place? Oh, for our own purposes, Mr. Sturgis, we maintain a kind of private little morgue down morgue. here. Our business is never very brisk. Most we keep here is two, maybe three bodies for special work. Uh, naturally, these drawers are all refrigerated. Mr. Sturgis, I... pull this one out. Here. I don't understand. Why should you... Okay, if you won't, I will. Take a good look. You ought to recognize this corpse. Huh? When? When did he die? That's the interesting thing about this, Mr. Sturgis. Edith, your fiancé, was murdered three hours ago. Dr. Portman was murdered... At midnight. Yeah. Eight hours ago. When? And your brother, George Sturgis, has been dead for 24 hours. Also murdered. 
24 hours. No, 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 that's impossible. Now, why did you do that, Mr. Sturgis? Why did you push your brother back into the wall? He disturbs me. Something happens to me. Please, Lieutenant, I'm terribly tired. Let me go home. Uh, could I see you tomorrow about all this? I, I can't uh, We think can't now. wait, Mr. Sturgis. If your brother didn't commit those murders, then who did? Who did? Who? Yeah. But George. Everybody knows George was insane. He had reason to kill. But George did. That's all. George, huh? But George is dead, lying in that refrigerated drawer. And while the murders were being committed, he was dead then, too, lying on a rubbish pile near the river, a half block from your house. That's where my men found him an hour ago. Nah, not George, Mr. Sturgis. Please, please, let me go home, Lieutenant. You don't understand all that's happened. Please, rest. Tomorrow I'll explain it all uh, to you. Tomorrow's too late, Mr. Sturgis. Uh, let me explain it all to you. No, no, no. Look, it, it, it must be the way I say it. George did it. George was a maniac. I'm the sane one. Can't you see, Lieutenant? George broke out of the asylum in Ohio. Yes. He made straight for New York. He called you. You told him not to come to your apartment. You agreed to meet him at the river. At the river? You were afraid of him. Not physically afraid, but mentally. Mentally afraid. In your own words, Mr. Sturgis, he, uh, he disturbed you. At the river? You were frightened of your own mind and what might happen to it with a lunatic twin brother around. So you took this along with you, this fancy letter opener. At the river? You kept your appointment with George, all right, but now you had a purpose. There in the dark, beside the river, you lifted this letter opener above your head like this. No, no, don't! You held it there for a moment. No, no, no! Then you plunged it down into George's heart like this. No! No! No, 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 not his heart, my heart. It was I who died that night, John Sturgis. Ah. You realize what you're saying, Sturgis? Do you? John, John. you're dead. John, John, you're dead. And I'm lonely. Oh, John. What happened to us? When it was all over, Mr. Sturgis, yeah. when you thought that you'd finally rid yourself of George forever, a strange thing happened. <laughs> you became George, and the man in the rubbish pile was John. Yeah. Well, so... maybe it's easier for you to take it that, Mr. Sturgis. Now that you're George, the crazy one, you can forgive yourself a lot of things, can't you? Like murdering your fiance. And the doctor and your own brother. No! Take me back. John is dead. Take me back, please. Please. That we can do, Mr. Sturgis. Come on. We got a nice, comfortable room for you. A room just like the one your brother broke out of. night that John Sturgis was led to his cell in the state asylum for the criminally insane, still screaming that he was dead? Of course, it was coincidence. But why did the door snap shut just as the clock on the tower struck 12 for murder at midnight? <laughs> again when death stands just outside the door, wearing a strangely familiar face, and the clocks strike twelve for murder at midnight. Barry Kroger was heard as the brothers Sturgis, John and George. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader. Thank you.